At the start of every year, I, like many others, set New Year's resolutions. And it's normally along the lines of getting fit and eating healthy. And I'll be honest with you, they don't always work out all that well. And in reflection, it got me thinking that patching is a bit like the New Year's resolution, similar to the ones I've set for myself in the past. For the most part, I know what I need to do, and I know how to do it. But more often than not, I only make a half-hearted attempt to actually do it. And those results generally speak for themselves. I'm sure many people watching today's session can relate to that feeling. Over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to show you how to build a robust and scalable patch management and compliance solution using native AWS services. This is a solution that will make it easy for you to do the things that you already know you need to do. My name's Mitch Beaumont, and I'm a Principal Solutions Architect here at Amazon Web Services. And welcome to automating patch management and compliance using AWS Systems Manager. OK, let's start with a story. Now, this fellow works for a company as an IT administrator. For the purposes of today's session, we'll call that company Company X. This morning, he's been paged at 3 AM because of a suspected data breach. He responds to that page, and sure enough, it looks like the personal data of tens of thousands of Company X's customers has unfortunately been exposed. By the time the morning news breaks, the data breach is making headlines around the world. The company's customers are in uproar, and the company's engineering and security teams are scrambling to understand the full extent of the breach and how it came to pass. It turns out that the vulnerability that the attackers had exploited to access Company X's systems was in a commonly used piece of application software. As the investigations continue, it turns out that this vulnerability was disclosed some time back. And to make matters worse, there were well-documented steps issued by the vendor of this piece of software, which when followed, could address the root cause of this vulnerability. Now, this is not a pleasant situation for anybody, especially for those customers that had their personal data exposed as a result of this data breach. Why wasn't it addressed if the steps to address this vulnerability had been out for some time? Why wasn't this vulnerability patched? Now, there are many reasons why companies, both large and small, struggle when it comes to establishing and maintaining a patch management strategy. Let's look at some of the common challenges outlined by NIST, or the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, which are often faced by organizations when it comes to implementing a patch management strategy. To start with, patch management is dependent on having a current and complete inventory of the patchable software, including applications and operating systems, that's installed on each host within a company's environment. Secondly, enterprise patch management can cause some resources to be overloaded, in terms of both people and infrastructure. So for example, you might end up with many hosts trying to download the same large patch at the same time. Next, installing patches can cause side effects to occur. Another common challenge which often causes organizations to err on the side of caution is unintended or unexpected problems that are caused by patches. As an example, there could be a situation where a patch installation inadvertently alters an existing security configuration setting or perhaps adds a new setting. An install patch might not take effect until some affected software has been restarted or some other state change has been made. Now, it can be surprisingly difficult to examine a host and determine whether or not a particular patch has actually taken effect. This challenge could be faced on a single system, or it could, if you extrapolate that out across an entire organization's fleet of servers and operating systems, the scale of that challenge can quickly become very overwhelming. So what are some of the things which can be done to help address some of the common challenges that organizations are facing when it comes to patch management? At Amazon, bias for action is one of my favorite leadership principles. When we have bias for action, we take small and incremental steps towards our end goal. We do this by prioritizing. How does an organization do this in the context of patches? Well, you might start by defining a small subset of patches that you must prioritize over all others. You do this through a process of classification, classifying what functions are most critical to your business and determining which patches make the most difference to those functions. This might be email systems or customer facing digital properties, for example. Now, from there, we can create a list of prioritized patches. These can be called baselines or collections of patches. Now we can commence the scanning of our fleet, and this will help us determine our level of compliance against those baselines that we've already established. And at this point, we now move on to the actual patching process. And this can be done in a controlled and business relevant order. 
There are lots of steps here, and an organization's fleet of servers grows and applications grows, going through these steps manually every month is just not scalable. AWS provides a suite of management tools and governance services so that customers get a consistent set of modern operations tools to set up, manage and govern applications and resources. Better yet, these tools are built from the ground up to be optimised for cloud scale. Now, as is often the case, IT operations or DevOps teams need to take operational actions across hundreds of thousands of resources and applications, both on AWS and on-premises, all the time whilst maintaining safety, security and compliance. This is difficult and time consuming. We want to make routine operations like patching and updating servers on AWS and on-premises easy and efficient so that builders can take care of routine management tasks in minutes and hours and not weeks and months. This means that customers no longer need to choose between having the freedom to innovate quickly and being able to easily manage large workloads, applications and resources and apply governance. The amazing thing about the cloud is that it can really handle this scale of automation. I want to give you some quick stats on the level of scale that we're handling today. Amazon CloudWatch handles a mind-boggling quadrillion metric observations a month. That's 1,000 trillion. It also triggers more than 3.9 trillion events and ingests more than 100 petabytes of logs per month. That's 15 zeros, 223 million per minute or 3 million per second. So that's somewhere in the order of 14 billion in one hour alone. AWS Config does about 2 billion configuration checks every single month. An AWS Systems Manager manages more than 10 million instances every week. And AWS CloudTrail, in the course of an hour, is going to be busy processing 16.6 .6 billion API event audits. With AWS Systems Manager in mind, let's now take a look at some of the native features of Systems Manager which can be used to help address some of the common patch management challenges that we had previously discussed. We start with AWS Systems Manager Inventory. Now, Systems Manager Inventory provides visibility into Amazon EC2 and on-premises compute environments. Using Inventory, it's possible to collect metadata about these managed instances. That data can then be stored in a central Amazon Simple Storage Service, or S3, bucket. Then, using built-in tools, it's possible to quickly determine which instances are running the software and configurations that are required by our organization's software policies and which instances might need to be updated. Remember how we talked about needing to have a current and complete inventory of the software which requires patching? Well, here we have our first tool to help with our prioritization and classification. Knowing what we now know about our software assets and the patches that are required, we can turn to a feature called Patch Baselines. Now, a Patch Baseline defines which patches are approved for installation on our managed instances. Using patch baselines, it's possible to specify approved or rejected patches one by one. Patch baselines can also be used to create auto-approval rules to specify that certain types of updates, for example, critical updates, should be approved automatically. The rejected list overrides both the rules and the approved list. Patch baselines define a set of patches that you've approved or blocked for deployment to your managed instances. In a patch baseline, it's possible to select patches by product, so Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2012, by category, like critical updates or security updates, and by severity, for which you want to review patches for deployment. For each category selected, you can then define a schedule on which the contained patches will be automatically approved for deployment. In addition to the rules, it's possible to specify an approved and a non-approved list of patches that indicate the patches that are to be installed or blocked, respectively. At the time of patching, Systems Manager will assess targeted instances for only the patches that have been approved prior to that point in time. How now do we go about comparing our fleet of managed instances to our approved list of patches that we've defined in our patch baseline? Well, that's where Systems Manager Automation and Automation Documents, or Playbooks, come in. Systems Manager Automation Documents define the automation workflow, which are the actions that System Manager is going to perform on your managed instances and your AWS resources. Systems Manager includes several predefined automation documents that you can use to perform common tasks like restarting one or more EC2 instances or creating an Amazon Machine Image, or AMI. It's possible to create custom automation documents as well. Automation documents are written using the JavaScript object notation format, or JSON, and they can also be written in YAML. 
They include the steps and the parameters that you specify which are required to perform those actions that are needed on your managed instances. We've now got our inventory. We also have our patch baseline and we have our automation documents. AWS Systems Manager Patch Manager brings all of this together. Systems Manager Patch Manager rolls out operating system and application patches using custom defined rules. Thanks a lot, Patch Baselines. Patch Manager automates the process of patching managed instances with both security related and other types of updates. Now, as I said, it's possible to use Patch Manager to apply patches to both operating systems and applications. One point to keep in mind, though, is that on Windows Server, application support is limited to updates from Microsoft applications only. Now, as we discussed, an effective way of patch management is to deploy patches in a business relevant order. A patching solution needs the context and an ability to patch just those critical workloads. Patch groups can be used to associate instances with a specific patch baseline. And patch groups help ensure that the appropriate patches are deployed based on the associated patch baseline rules to the correct set of instances. Patch groups can also help us avoid deploying patches before they've been adequately tested. For example, it's possible to create patch groups for different environments. These might be development, test, and production environments, and register each patch group to an appropriate patch baseline. Something again to keep in mind here is that a managed instance can only be in one patch group at a time. And when we create a patch group, Amazon EC2 tags or Systems Manager resource tags are used. Unlike other tagging scenarios across Systems Manager, a patch group must be defined with the tag key patch group. This key is case sensitive. Now, the value of the key can be anything you like, for example, web servers, but the key itself must be patch group with a capital P and a capital G. So now we have an inventory of our software, a list of approved patches, a way to install those patches, and an option to group the managed instances into business relevant groups to better manage our patching schedule. But how do we go about ensuring compliance across our fleet? This is where AWS Systems Manager Compliance comes in. Compliance is used to scan a fleet of managed instances for patch compliance and configuration inconsistencies. Using compliance, it's possible to collect and aggregate data from multiple AWS accounts and regions, and then drill down into those specific resources that are not compliant. By default, compliance displays current compliance data about Systems Manager Patch Manager patching and Systems Manager State Manager associations. Let's now look at how some of these pieces might fit together in a working architecture. We're going to begin with a central AWS account. And this is our management account into which all of the inventory and patch related data is ultimately going to flow. Our process is triggered by an AWS CloudWatch event rule, which triggers based on a schedule. The CloudWatch event rule initiates a Lambda function, which calls the Systems Manager Automation API start automation execution against a list of target or child accounts and regions. The automation workflow is initiated in each of the target accounts and regions. And at this point, we leverage AWS Systems Manager feature called Run Command. Systems Manager Run Command makes it possible to remotely and securely manage the configuration of your managed instances. Run Command can automate many common administrative tasks and perform ad hoc configuration changes at scale. So our automation workflow initiates the Run Command document AWS Run Patch Baseline. When that document is run, it uses the patch baseline currently specified as the default for the operating system type. However, if we create a patch group, then it uses the patch baseline that's associated with that patch group. The results from the run command task are outputted to the centralized S3 bucket. The patch compliance data is reported to AWS Systems Manager Patch Manager. The final piece of the puzzle involves leveraging a resource data sync to take the patch compliance data and outputs to a centralized S3 bucket. A resource data sync automatically ports inventory data from any managed instance to a centralized Amazon Simple Storage Service bucket. The sync automatically updates the data in the central S3 bucket whenever new inventory data gets discovered. Now, I've talked a lot, and in a lot of cases, it helps to see. So let's now see the architecture I've described above in action. For the purposes of this demo, I've got two AWS accounts provisioned. They're part of an AWS organization, and I've already deployed the components that I talked about previously. With that in mind, I'm going to show you the process to create a patch baseline for my critical workloads. I'll then show you how to assign that patch baseline to a patch group that I've created for those critical workloads. 
I'll then trigger the automation workflow manually, which will apply the required patches and run the necessary scans against my critical workloads. We'll then switch back to compliance to check the state of our compliance against those patch baselines. Now, if you'd like to play along at home with this demo, use the following QR code to download a set of CloudFormation templates that will set up the required AWS resources in your own AWS account. Let's start by creating a new Windows EC2 instance as part of our demo. We're going to use the EC2 instance launch wizard to create our new instance, and we're going to use the Windows Server 2019 base AMI. As part of our configuration of the instance, we're going to leave most of these settings as default, but we are going to specify an instance role, which is a managed instance role that was created by the CloudFormation templates that I used to set up this environment. This role includes permissions and policies that ensure the instances to which the role is attached have access to the Systems Manager APIs and the centralized S3 bucket where the data from inventory and patch management compliance will be stored. Now I need to specify some tags. First, I'm going to specify patch equals true. This tag ensures that this instance is part of a resource group, which is used to scope the workflows from the automation document. Then I'm going to specify a patch group tag with the name web servers windows. This tag is used to ensure that our instance gets associated with the patch group windows web servers and the associated patch baseline that we're going to create. Reviewing the settings, it all looks good. I'm going to now launch our instance. We can see that the instance has launched successfully, or at least it's in the process of initializing. One of the most important things we need to check here is the association of the managed instance role. And I can see here from that screen that the role is associated, which means that the instance is going to have all of the required permissions. If we hop back to Fleet Manager on Systems Manager now, we can check that our instance is reporting to Systems Manager. We can see our instance, which means all of the necessary permissions are in place and the Systems Manager agent is running. Let's now create a patch baseline. We're going to give the patch baseline a friendly name to help us understand and identify what this patch baseline actually does. We'll also give it a description. Now I'm going to choose the operating system, which is Windows, and I may choose to specify this as the default for that operating system type. I'm going to specify Windows Server 2019, and I'm going to select Security and Critical Updates. I'm now going to configure my auto approval rules. I'll set it to seven days. That works for me, but mileage may vary depending on your specific testing requirements and capabilities. Let's click Create to create and configure our patch baseline. Now we're going to search for our patch baseline. We're going to configure our patch baseline to be associated to a patch group. And we do that by associating the patch group tag that we defined earlier for our instance, which was, if you remember, Web Servers Windows. We enter that into the field and we click Add. Going back to the instance again, you remember the tag I talked about that needed to have a capital P and a capital G? This is where that comes into play. This is very important, and if that's missing, we may have an association issue. Looking back at our patch groups, we can see that our web server windows patch association is there, it's been created, and it's associated with our new patch baseline. Jolly good. Now we're going to try and manually trigger our scanning. I talked about using a CloudWatch event rule that runs on a schedule. Let's have a look at that. You can see the CloudWatch event rule is run every Tuesday evening at about 10.15 GMT. Now, because I cannot control time, we're going to trigger this manually. And the CloudWatch event rule triggers a Lambda function. So we're going to trigger the Lambda function manually. In order to do that, I'm going to click on the deep link in the console. And that's going to take me to the Lambda function console. Next, I'm going to use the test button to trigger the Lambda function. Now that we've triggered the Lambda function, let's go and have a look at the workflow back in Systems Manager. We can see that the run command is initiated, and it's running against our managed instances. Actually, it's been successful, which is great. Let's dive a bit deeper into one of our managed instances, and we can see the output from the scan or the run command job, and look at all the great things that the run command is doing for us. We can also troubleshoot errors that might occur through that process. If we now hop back to Fleet Manager, we can see that our instance is being scanned. 
and can we look at the patches that have been identified for that particular instance? And you can see there is no missing patches reported. Everything looks good. Let's now go and look at the compliance of our fleet of instances using AWS Systems Manager compliance. At first glance, we can see that we have two compliance breaches from a patching perspective. We can see a list of managed instances down there at the bottom. Now, we can change from a compliance view to a patch group view, and this allows us to identify which specific patch group contains those breaches, which is our web server windows. Let's dive a bit deeper, and let's choose one of the instances which is showing as non-compliant. Through the deep link, we get taken back to the Fleet Manager console, straight to the patch tab, and we can now search for the relevant tab that is missing from that instance, which is causing our breach. And here we can see a Microsoft Silverlight patch is missing, and that is what's causing our compliance breach. And what we're looking at here is an account level view of Systems Manager and the instance compliance. How do we go about looking at an enterprise wide view across many accounts and many instances? We're going to use Amazon Athena. Amazon Athena is going to be querying the raw data stored in S3. First, we're going to make sure that we're pointing at the right resource data sync database in Amazon Athena. Then, we're going to use a number of saved queries. We'll start by querying the Systems Manager agent versions installed on our managed instances. Here you can see a list of managed instances that we have in our multiple managed accounts and the Systems Manager agent versions that are installed on those instances. Let's now query for non-compliant instances. As you saw from our earlier report, we had two of them. So we should see two instances reporting as non-compliant through our Athena query. Making sure that we have the right database selected again, we're going to use the run query command. And lo and behold, two instances have returned back as non-compliant. Now this is a small example across a small number of instances, but you can imagine across a large number of instances across a large number of accounts, this would be an incredibly valuable tool. You can visualize this information using Amazon's QuickSight as a way to provide a graphical or visual representation of the state of compliance across your entire organization. Now let's take a quick recap. At the start of this session, I talked about my various failed attempts to set and stick to New Year's resolutions. Well, I'm pleased to report that in January of this year, I made a very conscious decision to not let this be the year of not eating healthily. I became a lot more aware of what was in the food I was eating. I prioritized foods which I know are good for me, and I started to track the calories that I was taking on board. I made time every morning to get out, take some action, and that could be walking, running, or even swimming. And I'm happy to say that I'm feeling better than ever. And at a recent check-in with my doctor, I got a clean bill of health. We all know that patching can be tough. It can take time and it can introduce risk, but it is without a doubt one of the single most important actions that you can take to improving your organization's security posture. Start by prioritizing your patches by understanding the workloads that you've got in your environment and the software that they are running and understanding the importance of different types of patches on those workloads. Use features like patch baselines to build out those prioritized lists of approved patches and tools like AWS Systems Manager Automation, Automation Documents, and Run Command to scan your workloads at scale. Make sure those checkups are done regularly through scheduled events, just like I now do with my doctor. Set up those maintenance windows as predefined times when you'll take action and apply those patches to the critical workloads, just like I now set aside time each day for exercise. And surface the results of those checks through your compliance tests and rules using tools like AWS Systems Manager and Compliance. Using Systems Manager and its many capabilities, almost all of the actions that I've talked about above can be scaled through automation. If this isn't enough and you're keen to learn more, why not consider checking out a wide range of training that we've got available to AWS customers right now? With that, I wish you well on your patch management and compliance journeys. Please take some time to fill out the session survey and let us know what you thought about this session. My name's Mitch Beaumont, and thank you for watching my session, Automating Patch Management and Compliance with AWS Systems Manager.